Yesterday, I brought up, we were reading Adam and Eve. Brought up a very good point, and I didn't want to go there yesterday. But it is a, a very good, um, very good point. And I do want to go there today. <laughs> and I just didn't want to go there yesterday. But that was a very good point, so we should should do that. So Simeon, where are we at? Thank you. Genesis chapter 3. I'm going to read a few verses here, so bear with me. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. <coughs> Is he telling a little bit of truth in there? No. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> He's twisting things, isn't he? For God doth know... So Satan's still, still talking, or the serpent's still talking. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof... So he already knows he's, they're going to eat, don't he? Then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall see... Nope. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, <clears throat> and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. <coughs> Excuse me. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. <clears throat> so they sinned, didn't they? They did not according to what God had said. Satan twisted it around just enough to make it seem like you know, it'd be okay, right? Is that? Yeah, yeah, and like you said, he mm -hmm. he put some truth in there. He did. Yeah. <clears throat> they certainly yeah. would know the difference of good and evil once they ate of it. And they weren't going to die right away. They didn't die, did they? As far as their physical mm -hmm. beings. Yep. Yep. So they sinned. And <clears throat> and the fruit on the tree was good food. It was. As far as appealing and probably tasty, appearing yep. to have, have value. Yep. And does sin usually present itself like that it certainly does <laughs> certainly 99 percent of the time that'd be all right yeah you know, look at the fun or or, or whatever Nothing wrong with it yep that's fine why would god not want you why would god have first corinthians 11 in there for women <laughs> that doesn't make any sense what's wrong with that mm -hmm. why does Deuteronomy speak about wearing the apparel of the opposite sex? What's wrong with it? Mm -hmm. Your pants are made for women. Well, yours aren't. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that. <laughs> they got kilts made for men, so... You know, we... Sin, 
you know, Satan can make sin look pretty appealing, you know, make it look okay. If it was always ugly and nasty looking and sounding and then we wouldn't sin, would we? Mm -hmm. Or we wouldn't want to. Who wants to eat nasty food or, you know, whatever, you know? Who wants to do nasty stuff? Well, some people want to do nasty stuff, but, you know. Um, but they sinned. And they made aprons or coverings. <laughs> <laughs> so they made aprons. Let's go cook. They made everything okay. Um. <laughs> I'm depressed. Let's go have chocolate. <laughs> and aprons. Gotta have your apron on. That's right. You have chocolate, you gotta have an apron on. <clears throat> you know, they, they sinned. They, they felt that sin for the first time. They knew it was wrong. They, they knew what wrong was. You know what, though? I see Adam. Because they know you're talking about sin and how the devil makes it appealing. Um, and we look at people going, well, they're doing it. And look at they're prospering. They, they seem mm -hmm. totally fine. And they're, they don't question themselves. They don't have any remorse. Mm -hmm. And so, you know... And here, look, people that actually, maybe they don't show remorse... Misery loves company. You know, did Eve, Eve may, probably was remorseful inside because she had oh, to see probably. sin right away. Yeah. I mean, if she, it didn't necessarily wait till Adam took that bite and um, all of a sudden they both understood it. So here she is. Here it's not going to hurt you because mm -hmm. misery loves company. And Adam's looking at her going, well, she still is alive. Mm -hmm. God said we die. Was it that way or was it more of a panic? Hurry, you need this. <laughs> Could have been. He could have been standing right there. Yeah, his mouth open. Could be. Uh, yeah, was he standing there? Could was be, does yeah. the Bible say if he was standing there, or did she? Well, it doesn't say that he came later, or so she you know, he came in for lunch, him. you know, and and, and, it said, and she gave. Were they for a walk and with, somewhat? Oh, hold on, hold on. He hmm? says what? That, that, can you read that part again where Eve gave the fruit to Adam? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll read, I'll start back at verse uh, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, uh, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, with her. and he, he did uh, eat. I, I don't think that Adam was right there when it happened. At least when Satan was tempting Eve. Because why did he go after Eve and not Adam? Well, probably not. Yeah, they probably weren't. Now, was hold on. <clears throat> hold on. By this tree and Adam was... Did they go to the tree looking at another later? tree? Or did Satan know that, let's face it, not enough men have control of their homes. And a man will often do what his wife encourages, even when he knows better. And so is this a demonstration of the importance of a man not just having power, but having biblical control of his home and the woman being submissive? I mean, it shows both her dominance and his, his weakness, if, if he were indeed right there, and the importance for each to find their role, when, even when it's contrary to their personalities. I mean, that's, I think that's a reasonable... And there's an assumption. interesting thought, too, because it, it states that it waited, that once Adam ate, then their eyes were mm -hmm. So, if Adam hadn't had taken the bite by one man sin entered into the world, would mm -hmm. the covering of him still have been enough to cover Eve? If he had said, no, we're not going to do it, it's still Maybe, there. but sin had still entered in. I wonder if... But would, would his protection have been enough right. to say, you're right. still... You know, you're still in the garden. Mm -hmm. How long was it mm. from mm. God creating Adam to God creating Eve? How long had Adam 
walked with God and had, had known God. The Bible says it was done in the same day. Hmm? I mean, if yeah. we're taking creation, you oh. know, literally, it mm -hmm. was done in the same day. Um. There's how much had happened in front of Adam. In that, in that day? Yeah, that he had <laughs> seen what God did and could do. Mm -hmm. Or how long was it from, from creation to the temptation? Did, did Adam spend more time with God than Eve did? did I guess what I was trying to get at was how much time did Adam spend with God? You know, was his walk closer? Was he more focused? Who's to say? Apparently not. Apparently not. <laughs> yes. Um, when Satan was tempting Eve, mm -hmm. Adam probably was not right there with Eve, because she would have probably said no. Mm. Uh, history proves mm. otherwise. Yeah, <laughs> says, but if they were both right there together, maybe mm. Adam was. There's, there's an another over thing with the serpent have. And facing he would have waited for them to be separated. Yeah, divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. You know. So I, I guess Adam could have. He could have been, been close by, but not close enough to mm -hmm. overhear whispers and mm -hmm. murmurs. <clears throat> so, like, I guess, but he could have been a little ways away. Just could have been. Let's let's uh, let me read a little more here. I'm just so perplexed why the Lord put that tree there to begin with, <laughs> and didn't give him a shovel to deal with the serpent. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, thank you, Lord. Ah, thank you. <laughs> okay, as soon as they, you know, as soon as they ate the ate the fruit, you know, their eyes were opened. They saw that they were naked. They made coverings. So, so they were walking aprons. Aprons. So they were walking. Let's go into the kitchen. So they were walking out with their eyes closed. <laughs> no, their eyes weren't closed, but. The veil was removed. Yes. The veil of sin, or the veil to sin was removed. Um, so they ate the fruit. You know, they've experienced sin, uh, a separation between them and God. Uh, you know, they made coverings for themselves. Um, you know, they've, they're feeling the heaviness of sin. Mm -hmm. which sin does bring. It does indeed. It brings that separation between us and God. And what was, what's the next thing we read? God comes into the garden. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden. So I don't know how long has gone on. It doesn't say days, weeks, months, years after they made their aprons then they heard the voice of the Lord in the garden God, it appears that God wasn't wasting time, you know where are you guys obviously he knew but you know, where are you guys even though we've sinned we've separated ourselves from God because we've sinned God hasn't separated himself from us. Now, there's a huge difference. Um, big difference is we have our advocate mm -hmm. that we can go to. You know, they didn't have that at that time. Um, and, you know, I, sin does bring conviction. You know, as long as we're smart enough to <laughs> allow that conviction to um, compel us to, you know what, I hear the voice of God. Even though they, they went and hid, you know, they heard the voice of God and they did respond. Mm -hmm. you know. We were, we were afraid. Well, yeah. You shouldn't really be afraid of God. You should be afraid of that sin. But 
Yes, Samia. You know, you said that I wasn't wasting any time. Mm-hmm. Isn't God outside of time? <laughs> God is outside of time. Yes, he is. He didn't let any time lapse. He just, just in case you weren't aware of that. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out for me. Our little apostolic Charles Spurgeon is Yes. Yes. Now, you know, the interesting thing when we when we stop and we evaluate it for any any of the the lives told about in the Bible though, that even though you know, so, some sometimes we can sin and the sin doesn't have a lasting repercussion. But most often times <clears throat> the sin does it's because it's going to affect somebody whether it affects the person who sinned directly or it affects another there's a domino effect ripple effect effect, um and we have to accept those repercussions but and so so sometimes that makes it hard to forget about our bad choices or our our choosing to sin but god when we true truly repent, he doesn't hold that against us. Mm-hmm. Even though we have to maybe bear the weight of our choice, he still wants to be just as close to us as mm-hmm. he's ever been. That we've you know as we've ever allowed him to be, and that's it right there. How close do we allow God to get to us? You know, and we hold that against ourselves. We do. And do we think other people, if it's a, a sin that's um, other people know, I guess, you know, whatever, whatever, I guess. We're caught out in a bar <laughs> by other people that shouldn't be there, so they're caught in sin too. But, right. but um, you know, that's such a, such a ripple effect. Well, we can know. look, we can hold our own sin against us. And we can look at somebody else with the exact same sin, and we can earnestly tell them, God doesn't hold that against you. You know, you just you need to move forward, pick up, and and get beyond it, and truly we believe what we're saying. But when we then we reverse it back to ourselves, and we, we've damned ourselves. You yeah. know, we've we've held ourselves to a higher accountability, which keeps us separated from God, which is exactly what Satan wants us to do. That's yep. why he keeps reminding us of our sin. Divide and conquer, you know, mm-hmm. separation, keep separation. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's again. Yeah, God didn't waste any time. Where are you guys? He knew where they were, but not only did God know where they were at, but God was there when they did it. He was. Well, if, didn't they make? Kind of sounds like they made the aprons after they heard God. Because I was afraid. Because I was. No, they're in their eyes. Uh, and the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. So, I, I think immediately, you know, and there can be years of debate on times and, and whatnots, and, and, you know, but... Um, and and we do, you know, we uh, in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam, and said unto him, Where art, where art thou? He wasn't calling Eve; he was calling Adam. You're the head here. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. That's you know, the, the point you were starting to talk about yesterday was when we sin, we do separate ourselves from God. We do want to separate ourselves from God because we... If, if we've known we've sinned, if, if, if we know we've sinned, that separation comes. Remorse sets in. Mm-hmm. Let's hope it's a lot more than remorse. Repentance. Repentance. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. 
allow that conviction to take hold and go to go to our advocate, which is who? Jesus. Jesus. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, thank God. You know, he's he's put something within us that we we know right from wrong. You know. Um, we seem to we we learn that more and more the older we get in the Lord, you know, right and wrong. Obviously, uh, young people and people young in the Lord are not so familiar with with that. You know, it's, obviously, it's a uh, like going to school, isn't it? We learn. It's not something that's just. Boom, we know everything. I guess we will never know everything, but just, uh, yeah. As soon as they sinned, they tried to cover themselves and God was He was still calling them, still wanting that relationship with them. So I thought that was a you know, a, a good Good point you were bringing up yesterday, Mama. Though. But we should, but we should go there. I like the apron. <laughs> hey, hey, aprons make everything good, right? Hey, God. Hey, God. And then God had to let him know what you've done isn't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, but let's do this right. Mm. Uh, let's pray. Father, we love and praise you today, and we thank you for your goodness, Lord. And Father, I, I know that you know we all sin every day, Father, and I just pray that you know we would uh, you know truly repent of the, those sins and not allow you know the the sin to separate us, Lord. Father, I pray that we would always draw closer to you, Lord. Seek your presence, your guidance, Father your grace and your mercy, your forgiveness, Lord. Father, we do give you the praise and honor today. In your high name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.